The final character is the Attic Apparition. I was very much influenced by Jean Rhys's post-colonial feminist reading of Jane Eyre, a prequel that tells Bertha's story before she arrives in the attic. Rochester in the story takes her away from her own country. Ponks her in a freezing cold, miserable building and she goes crazy. I'd had a conversation with Shira, who plays the role in the film, and something that really lasted with me was her politics about underrepresentation within South Asian culture, about colonialism, story of her family. I just thought she can play this role. And so I designed this character that had been in the attic so long that they'd become part of the cobwebs that because they're so underrepresented and so at the bottom of this bureaucratic list, they haven't even been part of the conversation to tick a box yet. And so I love this character. The look itself is all hand feathered with this gingham, this sort of liquid ripstop check. How they float in the wind is just so stunning. You have the sense of a uniform in there, the, the kitchen chef of servitude to something bigger than you, but actually you're better than that. That cocooned shape, the reference from Leonora Carrington, a surreal artist, a feminist icon, a distorted head shape that I loved, and a deliberate lack of focus on the waist, also showing that that kind of shape is also so beautiful. That final shot of the film is where we realise that this was heaven all along. It wasn't the waiting room, it wasn't purgatory. All the best people are here. She beckoned everyone into the dawn and saying, we're not just all in a candlelit haze of debauchery, drink and drama. We're also lit by the sun and we're also warmed by the dawn and we are at peace. Thank you.